Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in today's video I'm going to talk about the Canvas in Obsidian. First off, the Canvas is a core plugin. So if you go into your settings, core plugins, you can come in here and you can set this up, enable it or disable it depending on whether it, you want it or not. If you want it, go ahead and enable it and then you'll get this little icon here in the apps uh, tab or side pane here on the side. You can click that and then it will simply open up a canvas for you here. Now, this is plain, simple, pretty easy to do. But what is the canvas? The canvas is basically used for, you can brain dumping things, um, just throwing stuff on a page, and then you can start to organize whatever you need to organize uh, within the canvas. Now, what the canvas is not is a full-fledged whiteboarding solution like you get with Excaladraw or something like Miro. Um, one thing too is you're not going to be collaborating with others so it is something that you will be able to work in on yourself unlike Miro where you can share and have a bunch of people collaborating in the same whiteboard or canvas you will not be able to do that here. Now in the canvas as I mentioned it is not a full-fledged whiteboarding solution so you do lose the drawing type functionality and you cannot add different shapes and things like that there into the canvas in, a, in this particular plugin. Now what you do get is you can add cards and onto the canvas. You can add notes within your vault. You can also add images, PDFs and other supported file types that you can just drag and drop in here. I'm gonna show you a few of them where you can, again, you can start just grabbing things, throwing them on the canvas, and then you can order them and you can create links to them, so on and so forth. So within this canvas here, I'm gonna first start off with a card. I just double clicked on the, the canvas here, and this was easy where I can just do a new card. Let's go new card one. Right, and this thing can be as long as you want it. So it acts similar to a note, except for the fact it does not add a file into your vault or a separate file, I should say, into your vault. So if you want to come in here and you want to use the all the markdown formatting is supported. And if you come in here, we can see this. I won't go through every last one of them, but all the for, uh, markdown formatting is accept it in the card so you can do that there i'm going to come in here and let's just go ahead and simplify this to new card one we'll go ahead and you get ability to change the size of the card we can see that you can also have arrows come out and you can link different cards to other cards so if i copy and paste this particular card copy and paste create a new one here let's do number two i can easily come in here from either angle or side of this particular card so you hover over the different sides here you can see that you can drag and drop an arrow now with this arrow you can also come in here and you can change the direction or make it a non-directional um, link between these different cards uh, you can also make it so it's bi-directional. You can change the colors. You can add labels in here as well. All this stuff is pretty easy and intuitive. And it's really flexible. It's Even though you can't do all the different things like you can do with, say, Excaladraw, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Now, this these are the basic card concepts. If you come in here and by default, you typically will have the snap to grid and snap to object enabled. So if you move things around, you can see here where you have these little guidelines that shows the other objects and how you can snap to the either the center or the edges on there. And the snap to grid is that this canvas is a grid format. You may not be able to see it, but if I press on the command key and I do a scroll, you might be able to see the little dots on the grid just like you would see on grid paper if we come in here and we take off that snap to grid you're able to actually you know um, put your or move your 
your objects around to where they can be in between these dots that are on the grid. If you do snap the grid, then it will force you to put it and you can see how it's kind of locking in place or snapping to the grid lines here. Now, the um, you can turn these on or off, whether you like them or not. And when you right click, you do get options where you can add a card from right clicking the note, um, other media onto the card. So that was these two are cards. We can come in here and we can click and add a note. We will add this another note. This one here is one from the vault that's already into the vault. Let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. And I can also come in here and if there is no note already created in my vault, I can create that note right here and it will create a, a note for me. Um, where the file will get created in my vault. So those are pretty simple and easy. It doesn't get too, this is not too complicated. Anyone can kind of just jump in here and really get moving. Other things that you can do here, you can drag and drop images onto this canvas. You can drag and drop PDFs onto this canvas. And you can come in here and if you want to drop a YouTube video, I say we want to put a YouTube video on there that will work as well and if we come here let's move a few things around if I want to simply put a link to another web page that web page will also get put on the canvas and we can go ahead and scroll out if I zoom all the way out so when it does get a little bit cluttered if you want to see everything within the canvas you can come over here to this right menu bar and you can click on the zoom to fit and everything will show up in the uh, that you have on your canvas there you can also set the zooms over here if you want to you can undo and redo as well as change some of those settings that I mentioned about snap to grid or snap to object now this is really intuitive again it's not overly complex I do find that in a scale draw because there is so much you can do um, you could get tempted to want to do everything in here. You are a little bit limited, but this is really flexible for just throwing a bunch of stuff on the canvas and then you can start organizing things and let's go here and we have a few different uh, note cards on this particular canvas here. You can come in here and you can organize these up. So if I select these three, there are alignment settings here that gives you easy click functionality to where you can start aligning things on here. And if I go ahead here, let's go ahead and see how we align some of these to the left. Um, we can put these in a, let's say put those in a row. We can move those around like this here and like that. We can also select these here and we can create a group so we can come in here and group these things up and we can call them group one here now when I move the group everything moves with it again pretty quick pretty intuitive nothing here is rocket science the world is your oyster here with the obsidian canvas um, if you can think it you can kind of do it within the constraints of again those limitations of what you can put on the canvas so if you want to do a mind map you can come in here and you can do a mind map you can come in here and if you have a bunch of things you tasks or ideas projects etc and maybe you want to throw those on the canvas and then maybe start trying to organize those into different buckets you can you can do those if you want to do a SWOT analysis on some of the different tasks or things that you have you can come in here and you can do a little SWOT analysis so this is pretty customizable in the different types of canvases that you can create you can come in here and do a focus map here that I, that I had done with some things that I have so this is the canvas from obsidian if you did not see everything like if i missed something that you can do with the canvas let me know in the comments and until the next time have a nice day